Okay, today we want to go over a very important skill that we all need to learn with 3D scanning and that is making sure that we avoid tracking loss. It's not difficult and we're going to be using POP3 today. So as you notice on the preview screen, there's a distance meter. As we're too close, it turns orange. As we're too far, it turns red. This is going to affect tracking. So first of all, let's demonstrate with being too near what happens while we're trying to scan the sculpture. I start at too near. It's losing some. It's not picking up all the point clouds, but it actually hasn't lost tracking yet, surprisingly. Oh no, it's missing a lot right now. Huge hole. <laughs> hasn't captured his head. Oh, then it starts tracking loss there. So, not working out. Let's cancel that. And let's try now, if we're too far, what happens? So starting with it being red, well, it's actually not even seeing it right now. Oh, there we go. Surprisingly, it's capturing it. Oh, but now it's missing some of the point clouds. Yeah, not capturing everything that we should. We're not seeing everything in the preview camera. Okay, so no biggie. So let's just keep it in the proper wheelhouse this time. Right at excellent and good. And notice our results. Nice. All right, now notice in the preview window, all the point clouds capture really well before we even edit it. A few holes there, but no tracking loss at all. So simple fix, everyone. Just make sure that distance is correct. Not too near, not too far. Check out the distance bar. It prompts you if you're too near or too far, and you will absolutely avoid tracking loss. The next thing we wanna bring out when avoiding tracking loss with POP3 is you want to not move too fast. Obviously the scanner is somewhat forgiving if you are a little shaky, but if you're just flying through the scan and this item here is a little bit taller, so we're not gonna be able to capture it all. You're not, you can't see it all in the preview window if you wanna keep the proper distance. So it's gonna evolve rotating around once, rotating around twice, and you're gonna have to move up and down a little bit. But let's demonstrate what happens if you rush that too much by moving too much up and down fast. So I want to get to the top. Okay, I captured it that time. Oh, but then it lost. So that was kind of obnoxious, right? I'm just going too fast. So just don't be in such a hurry. Now let's just do it with a proper speed. I was actually still going pretty fast for a while there and it was capturing it, but it wasn't until I really started moving that it lost it. So now here we go again. Cool, there we are. So just don't rush it too much and we can see the results without editing it. Just letting it point cloud scan. 
captured pretty nice. There are a few holes in there. If you want to even be more patient, obviously I could stand up and try to get in more of the crevices of the cactus. There's a lot of nooks and crannies there. That's what it would take. But after we edit it, there's a good possibility that all those holes will be filled. So another thing to keep in mind with tracking loss, don't rush it, take your time. It allows some movement, a little bit of a rush, but you can't move so fast to the point that it loses tracking loss. Okay, another very important factor in avoiding tracking loss is making sure on the depth camera, your exposure is correct. So let's, we got two examples here, the white line and the black line. Let's put something like the white line on here, first of all. And auto is always a nice option when scanning because it automatically adjusts the exposure for you. So like you in the, see in the preview screen, it comes out very clearly. But if we do turn that off, notice what happens if I start turning it down. Auto put it at seven. The blue color comes up, which means you're underexposed. So you really wanna get right in the right spot. But if I turn it all the way up, you start seeing a little bit of red. So that's not great either. So remember, auto put us at seven, and there's a reason for that. So let's turn it back down to seven. And actually at that point, we're not seeing, we're seeing just the perfect amount of like with the crown is a little underexposed, but then little parts of the body are overexposed with red. But ultimately it's gonna give you a good result. That's where you wanna be. But now if we compare, with another color, like a dark lion. Notice what happens. So auto, previously with the white line, was at seven. So right now I haven't clicked it off of auto yet. Notice how it's underexposed majorly. We're just seeing all blue in the depth camera. And then on the preview screen, you can't even make out that it is a lion. So let's put that to auto and see how it naturally adjusts. It jumped all the way to 10. So turn the exposure up. So because of the darkness of the color of the lion, it needs to do that. But as you can see, there, it still is missing some points. So another thing, which is an option that I wanna bring out to you, when you go under First of all, when we go under object type right now, it's under body. Normally, if you, you can sometimes uh, see the color option. So let me go up to high speed here. And if you change it to standard accuracy or high accuracy, and then you go back to object type, notice this option. Then it gives you dark object that you can click. So this will automatically help you be able to capture the point clouds of a dark item like this lion. Really nice. As you can see, it's already turning up a lot better on the preview screen, on the preview screen. But I wanna show you the results of scanning the white line. Let's go back to high speed. Put the white line on here. It's on auto. Exposures correct. We see the nice amount of red and blue. And let's see the result. Okay, really nice scan. You can see the point clouds capture it nicely without editing it. A few holes up by the crown, but that would be fixed after we edit. So very important, just making sure, avoiding tracking loss, you're dealing with two different colors here. And something that should also be mentioned is we know that 
a white object, why we're having to change the exposure on the depth camera because white reflects light and black absorbs it. So that's why we're having to adjust that whole setting within the depth camera itself so that we can capture it better. So just keep that in mind. And of course, with the dark item, we had to turn it all the way up to 10 in order for it to be properly exposed. But then if you go into scan settings, you can also to assist with the scan, click it to dark object too, which will give you a great result and avoid tracking loss. And something I just want to mention with you is even if we do adjust with a dark object like this, the exposure is all the way up. And then we go to object type and adjust that to dark object. I just want to give you an example of what possibly could still happen because you're scanning an item that is so dark. Let me show you. Okay, what do we notice here? <laughs> Different result from when we scan the white line. There's a lot more holes on the preview screen, so we're missing a lot more point clouds. And that's actually something that the software itself cannot fix, but we need to fix because this item being so dark and actually a little reflective, especially here on the back, in these certain areas, it's very reflective and shiny. So you just need to fix that prior to scanning, put some scanning spray on there. And then when you go back, and turn the exposure all the way up and select dark object, you'll get a great scan and won't have tracking loss.